Hello! In this video I will show you how to implement some rather rudimentary unit testing in WPF application. This is .NET 5, uh, the latest version of WPF, although you could apply these concepts to .NET Core as well. Uh, there's no problem with that, or at least there shouldn't be any problem with that. Uh, now, unit testing it can be a great thing, it can be a decent thing, it can be a useless thing. And if you've listened to some of my podcast, perhaps, uh, appearances, uh, I did say in public that I'm not a fan of them. Uh, they are not perhaps the most necessary thing in most projects, especially early stage projects. Having said that, it's a good skill to have. You need to know how to implement them and they are actually quite easy to implement. They are quite simple and straightforward to implement until you start adding some of these, some might say more advanced features, but I would say more complex and more unnecessary features in these uh, unit tests. Uh, so basically, you have some methods, they execute other methods from your actual application, and then they assert the results uh, of your uh, whatever it is. In this case, it will be calculations. So, and uh, they do that, they calculate or whatever they do, and they check the results. So it's kind of like an if statement, a fancy if statement, if you will, and it, they basically output the results in a very very special window in Visual Studio. So I'll show you how it all runs and how it all works but first of all let's take a look at the WPF project. Uh, our example project, a very straightforward project, it's actually part of the example that I have in my WPF course and my WPF book. Uh, it's a calculator project, nothing fancy here. Uh, it's just uh, formula okay we have a formula we have some inputs and then we will have uh, an output uh, now i believe there is a bit of a typo but that's not really the point here now in the in the code behind we are in main window everything goes into main window and the output uh, as well is in the main window okay so we have a button click now let me launch that just quickly i will show you uh, sort of what it does just so you can have a better idea of, of how it works and how it functions and how straightforward it is but how not straightforward I had to make it in order to actually make the testing of it work. Okay so basically you enter a few numbers. Now I do believe there is a typo in this um, uh, formula declared on the top but again that's not really the point. And we have a little breakpoint right here we have minus 30 in this case and we return minus 30 as well. I can zoom in a bit. Uh, we have minus 30. So this is our application. Just a simple calculator. Take in a few values, calculate and uh, return the output or display the output rather on the button click, right? Now, some people would use something called MVVM. It's a sort of a pattern uh, structure, whichever words you like, but basically it's a different way of executing those click events, accessing uh, the data from the input boxes, uh, text boxes, check boxes, wherever it may be. However, the code gets extremely bloated if you use MVVM. Now, if you are interested in that, if you want to learn MVVM in a more practical way, you can do that with my course, my WPF course, or with my book. There's a paper uh, back and there's an ebook as, as well. You can get it on apress.com. The link is in the description. And of course, the link as well is for my courses in the description. Uh, if you want to learn MVVM, but I really don't recommend using that if you are actually in charge of a project. Obviously, if you join another project, chances are someone's already fancied the MVVM thing and, and they started using it and now the code is bloated and you have uh, more stuff than you need to have. Uh, but there is a better way to kind of separate things and uh, uh, allow access uh, from outside. Okay, now first of all, I need to show you why you need that access. So in the main window, uh, in the CS part, in the C sharp part of the main window, you see we have an event, a button click event. We have a button click event. We also have 
a input which is a private okay it's on it's not accessible basically from outside okay if you you can construct this whole thing right you can take the main window you can construct it but you won't be able to access these inputs or the text property of that input right from outside of it there will be that accessibility issue and the same can be said for the event although we can maybe uh, overcome that a bit however there is really no way to test the window class itself okay and therefore you need to have something outside of that and again that's why people like to use mvvm for tests but that gets the code bloated so i have a bit of a better arrangement uh, and uh, i think it's just as foolproof and uh, in fact it is a bit better there's less code to write there's less things to uh, fail okay you will avoid many issues and you will save a lot of time so say for example right here we have uh, calculators calculate one okay we have calculators class for the calculators right so if i go to the project if i go to calculators right here you see in the calculators we simply have a little static method right calculate one it's called if you had more calculators you might may name them differently or you might have calculate two or three or four and then all that stuff but this has separated the main feature from the window from the window events okay so in the window you only execute the event and you assign it to specific places now again there are many ways and uh, i'm sure some people would like to argue with me on that uh, but this is a straightforward way this is a straightforward way it does not require a lot of human resources it does not require a lot of time everything can be set up in a very readable way as well that's very important if you separate it all like that maybe you use a few more folders as well you put different things different features in different folders uh, and everything is very much readable and that's a good thing and you can see right here we only have a few lines of code had i used mvvm it would be a lot more than that it would be the whole page i would go down and down and down and it would be so much stuff there's no need for that this is a lot more simple this is a lot more straightforward so this is our calculate basically it takes a few parameters it does the calculation and it returns a string okay it's double converted to a string uh, that's what we need and the reason we return a string is because we display a string now when you do something like that you do have to check for a few things in the wpf itself you have to check that you are assigning to the text property not to the actual text box right or text block in this case and the same goes with the text boxes right you have to take text property not the text box itself so it's an easy mistake to make and uh, might be a little bit difficult to solve but in any case we have what we have we have one calculator method and this is what we have to test okay and how we can actually get to the testing part of it but again most of the work is in separating that and then in the testing it's all about uh, parameters right you set some parameters and you expect the result for those parameters that's what you really can test and that's basically the only thing that you can test there uh, and uh, again some things may be a bit different some things can be a bit more complicated you can add maybe different uh, constructors to your classes and uh, provide some different variables environment variables and things like that uh, and you can check all that in my upcoming course uh, about deploying dotnet core dotnet 5 rather apis to a vps to a windows server uh, that's my upcoming course it will be it will include the testing uh, unit testing x unit testing uh, like this the whole setup with azure devops uh, the deployment to the ios via the azure devops uh, on commit and all that stuff uh, quite an interesting uh, 
uh, course it will be. Uh, you can actually pre-order it now and it will be out soon. Now, back to the testing. The idea is actually quite simple, as mentioned previously. We have this one method and it executes and it gives us results. But to have this method, you first need to create your project, right? We have this X unit tests, okay, X unit tests. So if you did not have it, you would need to go to the solution. You would then need to go to add new project. And this is X unit. Okay, this is X unit. It will load. Now, right away, I see N unit and N unit does not work for us. We need X unit. Okay. And then we have this X unit test project dot net core. Do not worry that it is dot net core. Now then, there might be a few issues uh, because of which uh, this thing may not work. And uh, one of those issues is uh, the type of project, the target framework uh, for both projects. So basically, uh, the X unit project should look like this when you go into the uh, file, the project file. Okay, it needs to have net 5.0. Windows, uh, the same thing basically that you have in your WPF project. These need to match. Your Visual Studio should be on the latest version. And uh, everything in the NuGet packages also should be updated to the latest version in the X unit project. Okay, now the way you get to this, you go to the project, you right click. And then you go down and down and you go edit project file. This is how you find it. Now we can get back to the actual unit test. Okay. So again, the idea is quite simple. We construct our uh, static methods class. Okay. It might not be a static methods class. You might have something different. You might have a constructor in which you provide uh, some kind of variables, uh, environment variables, whatever it may be, depending on whether it's a testing environment or it's live environment, you might have all these different things. Uh, obviously in WPF that may not be necessary, but chances are it will probably be to some extent required. Okay. And here we have method test one. So each and every method with fact, okay, with fact will be a separate test. Okay, I will explain the asserts a bit later, but now let's actually run the test. Okay. And the way you run the test, you go to the X unit project. Okay, you go to the X unit project. And one thing I did not mention previously, you actually need to add, you add your WPF project through project reference. Okay. Into the X unit project. Okay. It's it's not X unit going into WPF project. It's WPF project going into test unit or X unit rather we have. Uh, that's how it works. It's an easy mistake to make, right? So this goes into X unit, X unit. Remember that. Uh, and the way you launch it is quite simple. You go like this and you go run tests. And then this little thing pops up. Okay. Now it's running the test. Usually it doesn't take long, but again, it depends on the size of the program and all that. Uh, and as you can see, it gives you kind of a drop down display. You have your X unit project. Then we have the class in which we have test one. Unit test one is the class. And then we have test one, the actual test. Okay. The actual test we have. Now, if I were to fail it, let's say change to seven, okay, like this, and I'll run all the tests again, it will run and now it will fail and you will see what it looks like when it actually fails. It won't be succeeded, it will be failed, but it's important to actually know the sort of uh, difference uh, that we may have. Okay, so the previous succeeded, now it's running again and now you see it's failed. And if it fails, it actually gives you a message. It says expected, expected, right? What we expected and then the actual, that is the result that we got. 
So not what we expected and therefore it failed. And obviously you can have many of these tests and some will fail, some will not. And then you can troubleshoot the failed ones and do all that stuff uh, in a debug mode and in your actual WPF application. But the way this works is quite simple. We have this assert, okay? And this assert is what deals with the actual result of the test, okay? Basically, it uh, has, um, it has, a, it's kind of an if statement, okay? An if statement uh, which, if true, gives you a successful result, and if it's false, it gives you a failed result. And in this case, we have equal, okay? So this value, expected value, needs to be equal to a value. This is the result value, right? You need to be the same. And I'll just move that back. But there are other options with assert, and you can have several of them. Now, if you have several of them, all of them will have to pass, otherwise the whole thing fails. Okay, so let's do, let's do assert, like that, assert. And then you can see we have uh, quite a few different things. We have empty, we have contains. Quite a useful thing, quite a useful thing, this one. Now, there are many of them, some of them less useful than the others, but basically the idea is the same. You get a Boolean value in the end. It checks the statement, and if it's false, the test fails. If it's true, the test succeeds. So that's all that there is to it in terms of integrating basic X unit uh, tests into your WPF application. Now do check out my WPF course, my WPF book. Also look forward for my uh, .NET 5 API uh, deployment course. Uh, that's going to be a very interesting course and very useful course. Uh, it's definitely a very good skill to have to know about, uh, even if you're not going to use it on your own projects. Also subscribe to this channel and support this channel on Patreon.